Uh, I'm Dave Sedia. Uh, I'm going to be talking about, like Jeff said, uh, snapshot testing applied to APIs and how it might um, help improve your development process a little bit. So let me, let me set the stage here. So pretend you've just pulled down your latest code, latest back end, front end. You do your build, you start up the code, and the first thing you do is you screw up the password. Uh, so, but instead of getting this error, um, you get this one uh, because the server didn't return the data that you expected. It's missing this error key, apparently. Um, so, you know, you, you check your code, seems like it's okay. Look at the data, it looks like the data's wrong. Um, so you, you walk over to the backend team. And you're like, hey guys, so uh, what happened to the error response on login? It's not an object anymore? And they're like, yeah, we changed it. It's in a ray now. <laughs> we told you about it in stand-up. There was a Slack message too, and your boss is like, yeah, didn't you see that message? <laughs> So at this point, you're starting to accept that this is probably your fault. Uh, but wouldn't it be cool if there was some kind of test that could catch this problem before it happened, like before it ripped your team apart? Um, so end-to-end -end testing might be the first thing you think of. Um, this is, uh, you might also call this acceptance testing, integration testing. Uh, this is a test you write with a tool like Selenium or Nightwatch that actually um, spins up a real browser and hits your app. So these tests have, um, have good value, like they, they exercise the entire stack, so you can catch things that you might not otherwise. But they have some downsides. Um, they can be kind of difficult to write. Writing them is kind of a skill unto itself. Um, and as part of that, uh, they can be kind of brittle um, if you write them maybe not so durably. Uh, your page structure can change, and then the tests can will fail, and then uh, you have to go debug the tests and fix them. Um, and they're, they're, they're pretty slow to run, uh, because it's orchestrating a real browser. Um, you kind of have all the latency involved there. So snapshot testing is kind of a nice middle ground. Um, not quite as full stack. It's, it's, it's not at all. But, um, but, it's, but it's faster. Uh, the tests are really easy to write. We'll see a couple of those in a minute. And um, the Jest test framework comes with snapshot tests like out of the box, which is also awesome. So uh, quick show of hands, who's heard of snapshot testing already? All right. And then keep your hands up if you are already using it. All right, so much fewer. So probably like maybe 50% heard of it and like 20% using it. Cool. Um, so let me give you a quick example, a quick rundown of how snapshot testing works. Um, typically, it's, it's for React components. So uh, you start with a React component like this. This is like a you know, simple list. It just takes an uh, array of items and renders the items. Um, and then you'd write a test. And the test basically just renders the list um, with, some, with some static data. And then this magic bit at the bottom, the expect tree to match snapshot is where it's um, doing the snapshot check. So the first time you run this test, um, there is no snapshot. So it, it writes the snapshot to disk, and the test passes. Um, so this is kind of important. So your component has to work before you, um, before you run the test. Otherwise, you'll get a bunch of failures later. So you either, either make sure your component is kind of like ready to go before you run the test, or be OK with you know, some failures along the way as you're getting things going. Um, so this is this is like this is the opposite of test-driven development. This is not at all test-driven development. Um, but then every every run after this, it'll just check the snapshot that was on disk. So basically, this is a good way of um, once your component's working once, you know, once you get it working, you write this test, and then it kind of keeps working, and it'll let you know if something breaks. Um, quick aside, this expect to match snapshot thing I mentioned over here. Um, Jest doesn't have this two match snapshot matcher out of the box, but it's really easy to add. You can install this um, enzyme to JSON package and then add this uh, Jest section to your package JSON and you'll be all set to go. So, uh, fun fact though, so snapshots can be used in more than just React components. Um, you can basically snapshot whatever you want. It doesn't have to be a component, it can be an object, or an array, 
or uh, numbers, strings, whatever, basically any JavaScript type, um, you can basically snapshot whatever you want, including responses from your API. So here we go, three steps to success, testing your API. Make the API call, snapshot the result, and rest easy. Hopefully, the test will catch your failures before it makes you angry. Um, so one thing to know about these tests, these are, um, the, the ones I'm gonna show you are um, hitting a real API. So you do need a running server. Uh, you don't wanna use any like mocked HTTP libraries, that kind of thing. And you need to clean the data between tests. Um, so like imagine if you had one test that like listed some users and expected two users, and then you had another test that created a user. And if you ran them uh, in sequence without, you know, out in a run sequence without cleaning the data, test would fail. So just make sure you're um, cleaning the data somehow, like when you're setting up your CI environment or whatever. Um, so let's look at an example of one of these. This one tests the login call. Um, this is a, you know, hopefully good login. So it basically just makes the call and then expects the response to match the snapshot. Um, and it's using async await. If you're not familiar with async await, basically await is just pausing on the, the login line until the promise resolves. Um, and then this is the snapshot that it generates. It's basically like running JSON stringify on the result, right? And it just puts it in the file and then checks it later on. So here's another example. Um, this is like the failed login case. And in this case, we're not even looking at the response because we want it to fail, it should fail. Um, so the await will, uh, cause, will actually cause it to throw if the promise rejects. Um, and then in the catch, we're, we're matching the snapshot at the end there. Um, and we get that fail in there just in case, like for some reason, if it doesn't reject, then it, it should fail the test. Um, and then this is the response from that one. So you get this object with a message. So, you know, if, if your API starts returning arrays, then this test will fail um, and you can go, you know, talk to the appropriate people. Maybe you. Um, so I showed you this response earlier. This one has a, a timestamp in it. And this, this can cause problems as well in, in snapshot tests. So uh, watch out for stuff that changes. Things like randomized IDs or auto-incremented IDs, timestamps, um, anything that's gonna change response to response. Um, you, uh, you know, make sure you're, you kinda wanna wipe it out before you check against the snapshot. So here's an example of a test that does that. Um, this is creating an order and it gets this order response back. And then the order has an ID and uh, created at uh, both of those are going to change between responses. So it runs it through the sanitize function before snapshotting it. And it ends up with a snapshot, something like this, where it just wipes out the values with the sanitize string. Um, so here is the, uh, here's that sanitize function. Uh, so this is kind of, maybe it's kind of a lot of code to read, but, um, it takes in the data and the keys you want to sanitize, like here. Um, and then it just, uh, basically for each of the keys it runs through and finds that key. And if it's, if it's not there or if it's some complex object, it just leaves it alone. Um, because presumably you, you only want to, you kind of want to be like surgical with your sanitizing. You don't want to just like wipe out whole halves of your data. Um, so uh, it ignores the undefines and the complex objects and then just sets, you know, sets that value to the sanitized string and you're all set. Um, you also notice maybe that it's using Lodash, um, partly out of laziness and partly because it supports this awesome like key syntax where your, your string keys um, here can be like deeply nested keys. So it saves you all the, the trouble of like writing all those like a and and a dot b and and a dot c, whatever. Um, so this, this solves that problem and it like automatically handles undefines in, in the path and stuff, it's awesome. Um, so that is pretty much it. Uh, those three steps of success again, make the API call, snap thought to the result, 
and relax. Um, thanks. So you can uh, you know say hi on Twitter. I've got a blog called uh, at, at davesetio.com where I write about React stuff, mostly beginner articles. Um, and I have this. If you're learning React, I have a, a book called Pure React that might help you learn a little faster. Um, thanks for listening.